All right, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the syntax of inheritance. You should have already watched and understood the previous tutorial that gave an overview of inheritance, so let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, I'm going to start by creating a public class called parent. And then on the inside of this, I'll create one attribute, public string name. I'm purposely not going to make a constructor because we need to have a separate conversation about that. Okay, immediately below that, I'm going to create a public class called child using my new syntax here of inheritance. So I'm going to say that child inherits from parent. Now on the inside of this, I'm actually going to create a constructor, public child, and we'll leave it as an empty constructor for now. And then I'll start by just saying that name is equal to Bob. It's important to note that we didn't have to redeclare name inside of child. We just inherited it from parent. Okay, now that we have those defined, let's come down here and actually create a child. So I'll say child C gets a new child and not pass it anything. And then immediately after that, I'll just do a simple console.writeline and I want to write out the child's name. So at this point, we probably need to have a meaningful discussion of this word public and also have a discussion about other access modifiers. So when we talk about access modifiers in C-sharp, there are really only four that we have. The first one you may already have a sense of, and this is the keyword public, and essentially this means that everyone can see it. In other words, you can access it from just about anywhere in the code. And then we have the word private, meaning only the class that defined the attribute or the method can actually access it. We also have the keyword protected, and this means it can only be seen by the class that defined it or any child classes that inherit from it. And finally, we have the keyword internal, and we won't talk about this, but basically it can be seen by anything within the same assembly. To give a demonstration about this, you can see that we've declared name as being a public attribute of parent. If I were to change this instead to the keyword protected, you can see that we're going to start to get an error down here inside of main. Main has no access to a protected attribute of parent, although child does. Similarly, what we can do is come up here and change this to private, and in doing so, you can see now that child doesn't have access to name, nor does main. So for now, what I'll do is I'll come back up here and I'll leave this as a public attribute. As we described in the previous tutorial, there's actually a lot of hidden code that goes on here. Uh, for example, public class parent actually inherits from the class object, and so believe it or not, that's exactly the same code as we saw before but I'll go ahead and remove that. There's also a default constructor that you can't see, so I'll go ahead and stub that in, public parent, and it would look kind of like this, assigning the null value to the name attribute. It would also assign integers and floats the value zero. Now where it gets a little bit interesting is if I were to put a console.write line in here to say that parent constructor was called. I'm also going to drop down here and put a similar statement, console.writeline, and put in child constructor was called. And if we were to run this, you might expect that we would see that child constructor was called and then it would print out the name Bob to the screen. However, if we run it, you can see that we actually have the parent constructor called first and then child constructor was called immediately afterwards. So we need to figure out what's actually going on. So you might remember that we had a keyword called this. And when I say this dot anything, I'm referring to something inside the class that I'm inside. In this case, when I say this dot name, I'm actually referring to child and its name attribute that we inherited from parent. Well, there's also a keyword called base, and I'm going to put it right here after the constructor. What's happening here is base is calling the parent constructor. A couple of things you should notice about this, the parent constructor takes no arguments, and therefore when we call base constructor here, which is a parent constructor, we're passing it no arguments. So again, base is referring to the parent class in this case. Now, one thing that you may or may not be aware of is if I come up here and I were to change this constructor, I'll say string s, and now the default constructor is no longer there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change this from name gets null to name gets the value s. And at this point, you can see that we now have an error in our code. It's complaining because the default constructor is no longer there. Notice that the constructor for parent now wants a string, so we need to make sure that we pass it a string right here in our call to base. So what we'll do for simplicity 
is create a string here in the constructor for child and we'll call it the initial name and then what we'll do is we'll pass the initial name off to the parent constructor and if you look at our code now you can see that main has an error in it and the reason is because the child default constructor is gone so we need to come down here and what we'll do is put in the name Bob and therefore we can eliminate this line right there another thing that might clarify things is to put in what's called with and then print out the value of the variable that was passed to it and the same thing down here was called with and then initial name okay so let's walk through this code you can see down here in main we create a new child and we pass it the name Bob Bob comes in here to initial name and then what happens is we immediately call our parent constructor passing it the same string that was given to us in other words we're passing it the name Bob that value comes up here into the parent constructor into s and then we print that out we assign it to the name and then we come back here to the child constructor printing out child constructor was called with Bob finally we can return back here to main and console.writeline c.name the syntax for it may be a little bit strange but just realize that this base is calling the parent constructor okay so if we were to run this code again you can now see that the parent constructor was called with Bob child constructor was called with Bob and then it finally prints Bob out here in main okay and it might be a good idea to come back up here and to put in this dot name gets the initial name alright so the last thing that we need to talk about is methods so what I'll do is I'll stub in a dummy function here public void do work and on the inside of this I'll do a console.write line that says the parent is doing work now because this method was public we should be able to call that method from the child so I'll come down here in main and I can say c dot do work and when we run it you can see that the output is very similar to what we had last time but notice that it says parent is doing work in other words we inherited this method down here do work and we called it from within the child so you may be asking yourself what if we don't want to inherit this do work function from parent well unfortunately you don't have a choice so what we can do is we could try to redefine it this way which is actually the incorrect way so I'll come down here and put public void do work in here and console.write line and this time we'll put in child is doing work and when I run it it actually gives me the correct output you can see here that it says child is doing work and you may say that you did this correctly now you may notice that do work in child is actually underlined and notice that it says something about using the new keyword and something about hiding what's going on is you're actually masking the method that you inherited from parent so instead of doing it using this wrong approach we're actually going to introduce two new keywords and the first one is going to be the keyword virtual and what virtual means is that do work can be overridden by any children in other words it's not necessary for them to do so but they have the option to now to tell the compiler that we actually want to override the method we actually can use the keyword override so we can run this code and you can see that we get the output child is doing work which is what we want and we've actually overridden this method correctly all right the last thing that we need to talk about is down here inside of do work one of the options that we have is we can actually call the parent method and we're going to talk about the base keyword so I can say base dot do work and essentially what's happening here is base is referring to our parent class and do work is of course referring to the do work method within the parent class so if I were to go ahead and run this you would see that we would get the parent is doing the work first and then the child is doing work second in other words we successfully called this method up here inside of parent and these work just like any other function call so I can take this base dot do work out here and I can paste it immediately below and again if I were to run this now you can see that the child is doing work first and then the parent is doing work second so that's it for the syntax of inheritance we've talked about public private and protected and what those guys do and we've also talked about virtual and override we also had a look at base with regard to calling a constructor and also calling methods within the parent so that's it for now and let's go ahead and move on to our game